Papyrus is the Michael Jordan, if you will, of fonts. So many intangibles, it's clutch. Truly clutch. Papyrus. Simply glorious. Marvelous. It's fantastic. Do you know how much I love Papyrus? The second I turned 18, I legally changed my name from John Levitt to Chris Costello. Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend, Christ Costello. I, I'm sorry, I mean Chris Costello. You know, the, the guy who made Papyrus. And now I, I get to embody him. You better know that, by the way. If you don't know that, I won't talk to you. Look, John and I go way back. We started off at the same school, same professors, same textbooks, and then one day he just snapped. I mean, one day he was fine, and the next day he was crazier than Steve Ballmer at a Microsoft conference. Ugh. He deleted every font on his computer except Papyrus. He's insane. Papyrus is the best of its kind, just like the best running backs in the NFL. Tom Brady, Brett Favre, Ben Roethlisberger. Helvetica is not just a typeface. It's, it's a pinnacle of typographic evolution. Try to imagine a world where only serif and novelty typefaces exist. You'll have to imagine it, I can't. It's too gruesome. But I would guess that you imagine people dying. Not people as we know them, but amorphous blobs kind of scrounging the horizon. They're primitive forms, maybe blurs dying in a field of embers and stone. Now insert Helvetica. Boom. Fixed. Now there are people, they're modern, they're stable, they're all wearing monochromatic clothing, none of them are fat, none of them are lazy, none of them are obnoxious. If it were not a typographic heresy, I would venture to say that Max Meetinger should have named Helvetica Helvetica because it just, it heals its environment by making everything around it better. Unlike papyrus, which makes everything around it worse. It breaks my heart in half, literally into three pieces, to know that people call it an it. But at the same time, to call it a he or a she just seems to demean it. I, I know, perhaps I'll just call it gorgeous. Fine. Uh, okay, here's Papyrus. Imagine a funeral. It's raining. There's mud all over your Gucci wingtips. After descending the one that you current dear to you into the ground, the mass of sorrow makes their way to the wake. As they enter the hall, no one stops to wipe their feet. They just trounce around, creating unsightly marks all over the carpet. That's Papyrus. When I look at it, I don't see words, I don't see letters, I see sorrow. Stains that can never be removed. Yes, if I were given the opportunity, I would go back in time and change every typewriter's typeset to type in papyrus. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Like the audacious cuts in Papyrus, John has repeatedly cut into our friendship with his absurd loyalty to this thing, this monster. One time, I was asked by an esteemed colleague of mine to redesign a company logo. Naturally, I chose to use the Papyrus typeface to embody the organization. When I unveiled the new logo, the looks on their faces well, it, it was undescribable. And let me describe it to you by using this metaphor. It was like they just crawled in from the cold, frozen tundra to find a warm, caramel spice, upside down latte awaiting them next to a blazing fire. Okay, first, that was definitely a simile, not a metaphor. And second, who drinks that garbage? Espresso. 
It's the only way a man drinks coffee. Upon its development, papyrus was, well, much more dangerous than a landslide. It's more like, more like lava, flowing gracefully down the side of the volcano and landing on the peaceful town below. That was good. That was good. The man is obsessed. He went from being my friend to the bane of my existence. Sorry. It's just... So much beauty. Talking about papyrus, it 